Uh, here's a question from our friend Steven Pinker, who's, who's here, uh, which is, should debiasing be part of the curriculum? So should, should we be explicitly trying to teach people to overcome the biases that we talk about? I think it would be good to have in the curriculum something that makes people recognize when they should slow down and reflect on what they're doing on or on what they are about to decide. We can't reflect all the time. And I think teaching about biases is usually not very effective at all. But introducing a language to talk about biases, educating gossip, as I've said, uh, that I think could be useful. And, and helping people recognize situations where it is important for them to do the right thing and where they are likely they follow their nature to do the wrong thing. Teaching people to recognize that is important. And today, I would, because of my interest in noise, I think that the, the recipe for the prescription for better decision making, for better judgment, a better organized or structured way of thinking is not oriented to particular biases. Structure in itself can be a good thing. And that's not the same as the biases. The question what was the asked? question that I forgot to ask you? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, you know, I've been thinking about what is the next thing that behavior economics should do? I it's thought that's what you didn't want to answer. Okay, good, answer that. Yeah, because it's not a matter of recruiting other people. It's, I think there is an awful lot of decision making that is going on within firms and in governments. And, and much of it is really of very poor quality. It's evolved, it hasn't been designed. And designing procedures for making better decisions, that is a very large field. I have called it sometimes the human engineering of decisions. I mean, just seeing an organization as a factory that produces decisions and then asking, what quality control can we apply? How can we improve the the production process for making decisions. This, I think, is a huge and unexplored field, and with the increasing prestige of behavior economics and the willingness to experiment, uh, getting into that is, I think, that is a very big challenge. That's why I was, in a way, resisting you know, bringing in new people. I was saying there's a lot of work for the existing crowd because that is not very different from what the existing crowd has been trained to think about. When we, when we try to impose structure, though, we're going to run into your, another version of your loser's problem. Um, as you know, I've been working with uh, one of the National Football League teams and trying, the, trying to get the football people to make smarter decisions is really hard, uh, like impossible. And, um, and they s strongly resist uh, having somebody else make that for them. They think that's, you know, Picking players and deciding whether to go for it on fourth down is not something someone my size should be advising them about. And, you know, of course you're right. You're going to encounter this. 
And by the way, there are situations in which they're right. I mean, so I've interacted enough with Gary Klein, you know, my, my friend and intellectual adversary, to know that the issue of when you do want to trust intuition and when you want to control intuition, that's not trivial. I don't want to eliminate intuition from, from decision making. What I would like to do with intuition is delay it. I would like people to consider a problem before they have an intuition about it and not after they have an intuition about it. Now, with respect to the amount of opposition that you can expect, you can expect a lot of it. But that may be because you're impatient. I mean, you have to think in terms of, you know, how long, how long did it take you to become sort of a famous member of the establishment, president of the American Economic Association. You didn't start out seemingly going that way. It took you 25 years. And uh, long Moneyball, <laughs> Moneyball has had an impact. It didn't have an immediate impact, but it had a substantial impact. And I think this kind of thinking is potentially promising, I think, and could, it could take on, and don't give up, even even with football players and, and football teams. Uh, okay, so the